Welcome back to the Single Cat Review. I'm here with Campbell the Cat as we go off to Campbellton because we're feeling like some Campbellton whiskey today. What you think, Campbell? Looking good? Is it right? Oh yeah. Hello, you're back with Dave and Tim and Campbell the Cat for the Single Malt Review. Where to this time, Tim? Yes, indeed. Well, we're on a bit of a spring bank train at the moment down in Campbellton. We looked at the 10-year-old in the last episode, and we're going to take it to the next level with the 15 this time. So let's not waste any time. We'll get straight into it. So just while I pull these out, a few spring bank facts if you missed them last time. Campbellton Distillery, and it is really the Campbellton Distillery. There is not a great many. And of the ones that exist, it is by far the most, uh, the strongest character in there. Independently owned, um, very hands-on, do their own maltings, all of their own maltings, which is extremely rare. There are very, very few distilleries that do exclusively their own maltings. Some do a few, some do partial, but uh, very little does the whole thing, like Springback. They do a lot of very, very uh, manpower-heavy stuff over there. Quite a quite a company apart really but anyway so we tried the 10 and that was quite significantly sherried blend of sherry and, and bourbon chewed we thought it was all right but I think and I know that I'm going to think this one's much much better this one is almost exclusively sherry matured which you can immediately see on the color for, so for 15 mm. years old um, in fact, almost for any age, you're not going to get that lovely, lovely amber brown out of a bourbon hogshead ever, no matter how active it may be. So very, very sherry dominant here. They've not only gone up in age, they've really, really switched styles from a balanced sort of a classic Campbellton to a very rich, very sweet sherry matured style, which I think really, really lends itself to the particular quirks of Spring Bank, but anyway, let's see if we can explain why I think this is the one to go for, because I really think it is mm. of the um, fairly priced Spring Bank ranges. I'm getting a lot less peat on the nose compared to the 10, which mm -hmm. we tried previously. In fact, I'm not sure I'm getting any peat. There's a little peat. Oh. I'm not, but you're right, there is so, so much less peat that I almost wonder if they have a different peating schedule for this one. Unless it's taken that five years and that different maturation to burn off so completely, that seems unusual that they would, that it would see such a massive decline in its peaty nature. It may be that there is just so much more um, sweet full flavours there mm. that it's taken a back seat. I'm just not sure and I don't have the information available. I could probably send them an email, I'm not sure if they uh, protect those secrets or not. But anyway, the perception is definitely a much less peat. Oh, I haven't shown you the colour there. Really, really mm. rather satisfying it's stuff. Rich, and dark, there. almost rosy gold. And as with all of Campbellton's range, very, very good off them. No colouring, no chill filtration. So this is what you see is what you get. And what you get is a little bit better than something that's coloured, you can mm. usually say. So, on the nose, this one, it's so, so much fuller than the last one. There's almost too much going on. The spirit is much, much less expressive. It's there, but it's like a warmth coming out of the glass now. It's less of a sort of a phenolic, almost kerosene-y. It's now a smooth, sweet acetone model blue spirit in there. Very, very, very sweet. I'm getting a really a strong impression of this pastry, there's caramel, there's bananas. Mm. I'm getting this banana banoffee pie. It is, it is, it is, it is very, very well. buttery, very buttery, flaky mm. pastry. Um, a little bit of meringue. Even. Baked, baked fruits, sultanas banana as you said and a very very sort of toffee lovely banoffee banana there dessert banana there's dark fruits plum cherry everything you'd expect to see coming through from that sherried spectrum the wood is really very very mild considering the darker color there's not there's no real staviness to this one that I can really detect but it's just such a such a rich such a sweet and moorish nose compared to the last one. They've made such such a different style and almost the only the only thing I could fault for that because I love I love the change that it's made is that they don't say anywhere on the bottle that that's going to happen. Um, mm. There's almost nothing on your bottle of Springbanks these days. They're quite nice clean concise labels but they give you no tasting notes, no information and if they said the 10 year old this was the this was a classic style of 15 this was nigh 100% sherry matured then people would know what to reach for depending on their style and they don't put that on so anyway you just have to rely on people like us to let you know 
I guess it's not that bad mm. after all. So, I think that just about covers the nose. It really, really is quite compelling mm. could, stuff. Could sit here and smell it all day. It'd be a heck of a boring video, but mm. I'd be excited. But to link it back to another distillery, it's like, oh, it's if, um, if say, a, a, a kipper fell into the vat of Glendronic. That's probably how I'd describe this one. It's really, really good, sweet, almost Highlandy sherry maturation with just something really quite funky and salty and interesting going on. Yeah, someone dropped their sardines in, mm. the, in the Glendronic. And sardine died and, happy. Um, and they're all good to go. So let's see what's on the palate at full strength. Mmm. Mmm. Much that, more approachable than the 10 year old. Mm. The spirit has that modelling glue aspect. It's prickly, it's hot, it's much longer than it was in mm. the 10 year old expression. And the, the body Ooh. is thick. It's quite yeah. a hot day out here if you haven't been. Um, if you can see the uh, the sweat beating on my nose in this jolly waistcoat, um, middle of summer hot, down here, quite in a the hot, quite a humid day, and it's con it's even mm. fumy as it is. It's still really quite nice and soft, mm. and it just coats the mouth wonderfully. It's, it's a very kind of a dense, almost heavy collection of flavours. It really weighs on the tongue. Mm. Lots of heavy sweetness, lots of not quite spicy heat. We referred to the last one as slightly waxy. Um, this one is heavily, heavily oily. Um, oily like very few others uh, really really has a huge body and so much of that I think comes or rather so much of that would be lost through chill filtration so they've made so much of a better whiskey here by not stripping all of that mm. out. There's a tangy sort of very very slightly sour sherry flavour like one of those particularly strong and tongue curling sherries. Mm. There's a little uh, little fino character on there if you tried that before. Mm. Let's take it down a little. And it's all really quite meshed together now, but what I think we're going to find as we add the water is that will broaden out and everything will become just a little bit clearer than it was before. Mm. Mm, that's mm. taking See, on that's, kind of a Glenfiddich smell. That's really that, stretched uh, the nose apart. Yeah. There's even some green fruits in here now. Mm. There's green gauge plum quite yeah, significantly. sour strong um, wine grapes. These very, very fresh, sweet citrus. A big old bite of lemon, skin and all. There's a little bit of preserved lemon actually in here, Moroccan preserved lemon, mm. that sort of salty stuff you get in your couscous. It's much, much juicier now. It's less thick and oily, but it's very, very fresh. Mm. Yeah, this tastes like something I'll use as stuffing for a bucket of chicken or a duck. Some. Mm sweet uh, game bird. Yeah, that's a remarkable transformation. I think it would depend entirely on the taste of the consumer, how you liked it. I like oily whiskies quite a lot, so I really did enjoy it at full strength, but just the sheer, it's almost refreshing now, and it's very, very uncommon for a warm whiskey on a warm day to be refreshing, you know, without any you know, cube of ice or mixer or something like that. This really is mouth-watering and refreshing in its character because mm. these fruits are just so fresh now with that addition of water. Mmm. Apples as well. Apples, mm. pears, it's taken on so much unexpected space-side character. Still no Highland spice. There's very, very little spice on here, uh, which is fairly unique. You almost always get at least one or two spices mm. off your whiskies. And also on here, there's I think so much going on that that signature strawberry, which I always look for, the strawberry jam, strawberry compote in my spring banks, even though you could taste just a shadow of it in the 10 year old, just beginning to mature in, you really can't taste it in here. Mm purely because there's so much other stuff going on, so... Yeah, I'd compare that to sort of mm. like an apple pie without the cinnamon. Pretty much, I think. Um, it's it's lovely. If there's one fault against it, is it's not quite the most spring banky whiskey out there. It's less funky than the other mm. ones from the range can be, certainly less than the 10-year-old. It's almost too clean. So if you're one of those people that goes to Campbellton for the sheer funky weirdness and the... Um, those sort of jazzy, uh, scatty flavour, if you will, of the uh, of the 
flavors that they create then this one might not be the one for you but if you were into it for any other reason under the sun then I would say given the fairly small price increase between the 10 and the 15 well hello wasp where you go um, I would go for this one this hmm. is this is hands down my favorite and although the I mean the 18 is excellent the 21 is phenomenal but they get very very expensive which is almost understandable given the craft that goes into the whiskies that come out of there we're getting a pretty good deal from these young ones considering how many hands have touched the bottle quite literally they um, they bottle label and cork all um, by hand so they probably hire about a thousand percent more people in their operation <laughs> than any other distillery really so good on them for that I suppose mm. propping up the, uh, the economy down there but scores wise I think this is a tremendous tremendous jump in quality I'm going to give this one an 86 mm. I'll give it an 82 there is a definite increase in quality and expression and just character over the 10 year old not as huge an increase as Tim has perceived that's okay like if you're if you like a bit of peat and you like some funkiness you'll be disappointed but in my case, I think it's a good thing because the reduction in that peat and then that funk has allowed other flavours to really expand and even explode to fill this one out. Mm. It's tremendously strong stuff, and it's not only that; it's it's one of my real, one of my real recommended whiskies. I don't have a great many, but I try to point them out when I do. This one is something I'd recommend to fill out anyone's collection because not only is it of supreme quality, it's something quite on its own that you're not going to get from any other part of Scotland, any other part of the world. It's an irreplicable character that comes out of Campbellton and I think everyone should try it at least once and this really really is the bottle I would reach for. I think it's really excellent stuff but anyway, speaking of excellent stuff, we will have more excellent stuff coming for you down the pipeline. I think Dave's got his hands on another tequila for you, for tequila fans. Um, we'll hopefully have a bit less cicadas. One has, um, in fact, I can see the bugger there. I'll deal with him shortly. Never mind. Before it completely blows off our sound system, this has been the Single Malt Review. Do stick around. We'll have something really, really quite interesting for you coming up in the weeks and months. Keep safe. Slander. <laughs>